the cloud plays with cutting edge technologies. Topic of my discussion today with Eric Olson. He is North American supply chain lead with Accenture. Hello, Eric. Bob, it's great to be with you. Thank you for having me for such a, a timely topic. And thank you. Now, we could hardly call the cloud new technology at this point. It's been around for quite a while, so it doesn't exactly fall under the area of innovation. But there are a number of other innovative technologies that have emerged since then. Uh, analytics, machine learning, AI, stuff like that. And the question is, do they play nice with the cloud? Do they integrate with it? Is the cloud a, uh, an enabler or is it a challenge for these technologies? Just give me a sense of how these, these things are combining these days uh, and working together. It's, it's a great question. Cloud is actually the reason how all of those those different pieces and technologies get knitted together. Uh, when oh. you think about the capabilities that you know uh, modern supply chains are trying to enable, mm -hmm. it's best enabled in a cloud environment where you have resident things like a ton of data, both internal and external to your organization that you didn't have access to before. Mm -hmm. there's, there's fewer issues with data latency around when you can actually access that data. Then you begin to talk about the integration and the open architectures that the cloud provides, such that you know those all those IoT devices that are you know on on equipment and in your facilities and on your products are now real time in the cloud with you. If you've advanced blockchain technologies, that's also in the cloud and, and and with you. And then when you've got all access to all that data, you know the application of microservices and algorithms and applied intelligence and machine learning mm -hmm. and the compute power allowed to do to do just different things than you've done before. It's the great enabler, frankly. Yeah, so it is a great enabler. It sounds like it makes a lot of sense, but um, I, you know, when the cloud came along, there was a little bit of an adoption issue with, with people you know, facing it for the first time. Questions were, well, I don't wanna lose control of my, uh, of my servers. I, I'm, worried about, um, I'm worried about interruption of service. I'm worried about security. I mean, these were all the big deals at the time. Do you think they've all been sufficiently addressed so that people aren't even asking those questions these days? I would say this, Bob, I think a lot of those questions are still being asked. I think that what has happened is that you have a fairly substantial advance to solve some of those such that you're getting executives to be way more comfortable with it. We, we just recently released some, some, um, some research this week. Mm -hmm. I give you a data point that I think points in this, in this direction. Okay. Pre-COVID, right, 15 maybe 20% or we, we did some research that said 20% of workloads were in the cloud. Now we've just recently completed some research where over 600 supply chain executives as a part of our 2021 technology vision, 93% of the executives believe that well over 50% of their supply chain workload will be in the cloud in the next three years. 50, so, let me get that right. 55 50, Greater than 50% of the workload will be in the cloud in the next three years. That's right. Uh -huh. So it is definitely like so many things the pandemic has done. It has accelerated adoption, has it not? It is absolutely accelerated adoption. I mean, the last time you and I talked two years ago, and um, we talked about this being an inflection point or a tipping point, we're well beyond that now. Now, now you see the grand acceleration towards all things digital enabled by the cloud. It's almost a chicken and egg kind of thing. I'm wondering whether the cloud is bringing about this technology. This technology is it bringing about the cloud or a combination of the two things together, hand in hand. They, you know, as you're saying, they can't really be separated anymore, can they? It's interesting. I think what people are seeking, Bob, is solutions, right? Mm -hmm. And in seeking those solutions, I think they're discovering that the best way, and in some cases, maybe the only way in which to do it, is to have, it, have again, cloud be the great integrator and enabler of those of those technologies in, in an open architecture and platform type economy, right? Yeah, yeah. We're talking about adoption of the cloud, which of course is nothing new as we said before, but some of this other stuff is AI, machine learning, especially I'm thinking about to what extent are companies actually aggressively embracing AI and how many are sitting on the fence in the same way that they sat on the fence with the cloud initially? Yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the way, um, here's the kind of data signs that I look for, Bob, that, and that we look for and what's happening. You look at the amount of investment money is being poured into, like this is the golden era right now for supply chain professionals. On the one hand, COVID has presented a bunch of challenges, right? Um, supply chains, global supply chains that have been disrupted. You've got shortages in, in key components in electronics. You've got shortages and congestion at ports and so forth. But I think what's happened is it's that truly supply chain has become 
the board level, the C-suite level topics such that investments are getting a lot and folks are seeking solutions to some of the most vexing problems they've got in their supply chains. So many of the problems of supply chain today seem to be physical in nature, though. Do you believe that these technologies we're talking about may go a distance towards solving what we're seeing now in terms of congestion and equipment unavailability and port problems and stuff like that? Is that all, can that be addressed by actual technology? Yeah. So one of the, uh, look, I believe so, Bob, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Number one is, you know, the power of the cloud and the compute power and the amount of data and so forth. One of the key findings of the technology vision that we just most recently released was the notion that um, there's well over 70% adoption by most supply chain executives around the creation of digital twins of their supply chains, Mm -hmm. right? And not just their supply chain, but also their ecosystem partner supply chain, such that the ability to do far more simulation um, and innovation in the supply chain is greater than it's ever been. Yes, at the end of the day, things are moving and, and you physically have products and ships and trucks and ports and so forth. But the ability to monitor, have greater visibility, to sense and respond to, and ultimately be able to track all of that is being enabled by the digital technologies that are available today. Mm-hmm. The so-called digitization of the supply chain, which can be a very vague term trying to figure out exactly what that means. But in, in, in your mind, if I say digitization, is it pretty much what you just told me? Is that how you would define it? It's interesting. I actually think there's, um, to, probably depends to some degree, Bob, on the industry you're in. In some cases, the products themselves are becoming digitized. In other, in, in other cases, it might be the supply chain, whether it is the carriers, the shippers, whether it is the ports, whether it is the equipment that all this stuff is moving on. Um, but in many cases, for folks who are manufacturing you know, highly complex technical equipment, mm-hmm. automobiles or high-tech electronics and equipment, the products themselves are becoming digitized, right? And, and, and the ability to actually manage those products in the supply chains presents its own unique sense of security challenges um, and digitization challenges as well. You already began to answer the next question I had in mind, and that is which industries do stand to benefit the most from this technology? You referenced automotive. Uh, what, other tech, what other industries are really in good shape to make optimum use of these innovations? I'll say it this way, Bob. The ones that we're seeing take the most, most action today, whether they were being forced or whether it is they simply are um, you know, using digital as advantage would be, think, would be folks like uh, retail, consumer products, life sciences, um, industrial um, is coming around. It's trailing a little bit more behind those. But when you think about the disruptions that are occurring in the consumer and retail business, right? The, 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 you know, the COVID driven, you know, the search for, you know, better, um, you know, opportunities for last mile logistics, the extension of the storefront, unified commerce and e-com channels, buy online, pick up a store, have delivered to the home, mm-hmm. direct to consumer. All of those challenges, I believe retailers and consumer goods organizations are responding to by rapidly accelerating the the digitization work that they're doing in their supply chains. Yeah. What's the next big innovation, the next thing waiting in the wings to have a real impact from a technological standpoint on supply chain? So one of the things that in in the most recent research that Accenture just completed was um, in our tech vision, the, the notion of multi-party systems. We would have previously referred to that as blockchain. And 87% of supply chain executives polled in our research recently believe that um, there will be a great acceleration of blockchain multi-party systems. And so today, I still think folks are focusing predominantly, Bob, on digitizing their own supply chains. But again, as the great integrator, you know, uh, an enabler of the cloud, that puts you into the world of multi-party systems, blockchain technologies, and so forth. And today, roughly 20, 21% of executives declare that they're using some form of distributed ledger technology. And again, um, 87% of them believe over the next several years that that will become an even greater force. And so I think that is the, the, the next big thing in the next three to five years that will advance uh, the ecosystems are of our client supply chains. Why do you think it's important to distinguish between those terms, want blockchain and multi-party systems? How, how do you see a difference there? Yeah, I mean, I would say this, right? I mean, blockchain is the underlying 
technology. We refer to it as multi-party system simply to reflect the, uh, the nature in which organizations will interact, right? And it goes, for us, it goes beyond simply the technology it gets into the operating models, the governance, and things along those lines. And that's why we use the language multi-party systems. The yeah. so-called magic formula of supply chain collaboration that companies have been talking about for so many years. And maybe, Certainly we, have. maybe we can circle back and say that the cloud and all this technology will finally make it possible when it, where it wasn't possible before. I don't know. But, uh, I, I would say know. this. I mean, it, you know, what I would say, Bob, is again, I, you know, two years ago, we talked about it as a tipping point. I think now... Um, you know, we're at the golden era of as supply chain professionals watching this digital technology mm -hmm. vastly improve, um, you know, a lot of companies' supply chains. And, and again, mm -hmm. as evidenced by the money flowing into it and, and the acquisitions and the private equity investments into this space, both small and large, to me, um, it's a bit of an arms race to try and, uh, uh, you know, invest in it, the next generation of supply chain technologies. Past the tipping point, consider it having tipped. Right. I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> in indeed. All right. Eric Olson of Accenture, thank you for guiding us through the path of all this new technology, discussing how it plays with old technology, you know, notably the cloud. Thanks very much for your time. Good talking to you. Bob, I appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you.